Over the past decade, there has been one question that has fascinated the WWE fans. Vince McMahon, who has been at the helm for nearly four decades, is bound to call it a day at some point in the future, and chances are it is going to happen sooner rather than later. Vince, who now has grandsons and granddaughters, would want to spend more time with his family before old age forces him to stay put, and Vince being the ever aggressor would want that to happen on his own terms. When Vince decides to take a back seat, it's Triple H and Stephanie that will take over the reins. Triple H has been pulling the strings on NXT as the former WWE Champion is being taken through the paces of building a brand on his own. When the training wheels do come off and Triple H has to completely take over the WWE, he needs to know what needs to be done on the operational front and NXT has been an excellent learning curve for him. While Triple H has created his own stars on NXT, not everyone will be thrilled if Triple H takes over the company. In this video, we look at 10 stars Triple H would likely let go if and when he takes over WWE. Goldust is one of the longest serving WWE superstars today and while the superstar was let go for a while in the 2000s before being brought back to team up with his brother, Goldust has been a constant figure in the company. The former IC champion thrived during the Attitude Era especially because of his outrageous gimmick and is one of the most reliable figures in the company today. While Triple H values loyalty and the fact that Goldust is the son of the legendary Dusty Rhodes, the Cerebral Assassin also understands the importance of evolution and giving the youngsters more opportunities in the company. For one reason or the other, Goldust has been on WWE's payroll as an active competitor, but hasn't been wrestling frequently, and while Vince might be okay with this, Triple H certainly will have other ideas. While it remains to be seen if Goldust continues to compete over the next few years, Triple H won't think twice about letting him go to make space for younger stars. It has been a rather tumultuous road for the two men portraying the Sin Cara character. While the original Sin Cara couldn't adapt to the WWE style, injuring himself multiple times in the process before eventually parting ways with the company, the current version hasn't had much luck with the injuries either. The original Cara was signed by WWE to replace Rey Mysterio and to cater to the Hispanic fanbase. However, things haven't worked out the way WWE would have wanted and with Rey Mysterio now back in the company and the likes of Kalisto, Grand Metalik, and Lince Dorado getting more opportunities, Sin Cara is someone that can be considered a expendable in the organization. And one thing we know for certain about Triple H is the fact that he won't back down from making the tough decision, which could bring Sin Cara's tenure to an end. Back in the 80s as well as the early 90s, jobbers played an integral part in making the top superstars look good. However, as years progressed, their roles reduced in wrestling organizations and the term itself is seen as taboo in the wrestling industry. However, Kurt Hawkins has played his character to perfection, but there is only so much Hawkins can do with this character. The fact that he has lost all of his matches in the company will work against him if WWE decides to give him a chance, with the fans not taking him seriously. While superstars are often repackaged and given new gimmicks, Kurt Hawkins isn't someone that would be missed by the fans if WWE decides to give him his marching orders. Triple H might look at Kurt and believe that he can never regain his credibility in the eyes of the fans and might ask Hawkins to go back to the indies and work his way back to the top. It was a time when R-Truth challenged for the WWE title and the fans loved his edgy character. R-Truth's heel turn elevated his stock in the organization, but he ran into John Cena and that was all she wrote. Truth has been languishing in the lower mid-card in WWE for the past couple of years. While he still makes appearances for comic relief, he will never likely win a championship in the WWE. While Truth is a model employee, there is only so much talent pool WWE can afford, particularly when they are churning so many other stars from their developmental brand. R-Truth will likely be one of the casualties when Triple H decides to let go of dead weight and make space for the younger stars that are hungrier and are ready to showcase their talent to the world. A decade ago, Cassius Ono was one of the top independent stars that was setting the stage on fire. As Chris Hero, he was used to putting stellar matches on, and along with Cesaro, dominated the tag team division. When WWE eventually came calling, he managed to get on the nerves of the officials, and when WWE finally decided that Ono was being lazy and wasn't as focused as they wanted him to be, they decided to release him from his contract. 
Ono is now back in the company. While the superstar is still a solid worker, he hasn't been pushed on NXT. There is a good chance that Ono will stay on NXT for the next year, and one gets the feeling that he hasn't impressed the officials, Triple H in particular, enough to warrant a place on the main roster. There is only so much patience Triple H will have, and as things stand, even if Ono makes it onto the main roster, Triple H might be compelled to pull the plug on the star. As wrestling fans, we have to feel bad for Zack Ryder. The Ryder Revolution, which took off in 2011, saw Zack winning the US title, but he would be pushed down the ladder almost immediately, and the fans that chanted for Ryder soon forgot about him. WWE could have made a star out of Zack, but instead they took over his hit YouTube show and made him irrelevant. Ryder never quite recovered and now finds himself in relative obscurity once again. While we can see Ryder during backstage segments, house shows, and in irrelevant matches, one believes that he can never achieve the heights he once achieved in the company. Ryder is now portrayed as a dork, and while he now has his own podcast and a show on the WWE Network, Zack unfortunately doesn't bring any value to the company. Triple H believes and starts reaching for the brass ring by any means necessary and might think Zack isn't cutthroat enough to be in the company. This could see Zack getting cut from the roster if Triple H takes over. There are very few women left in the company who were hired during the days when WWE wanted divas rather than wrestlers, one of those women being Alicia Fox. Fox never claimed to be a good wrestler, and she has been given very little to do over the past few years. Her biggest contribution has been captaining Team Raw at Survivor Series last year, but the superstar hasn't done anything else that is noteworthy. With more women from NXT set to make their main roster debuts, Fox's spot is in jeopardy. Just like other older talents, Fox, who doesn't offer much to the company at this point, will find herself pushed to the back even more, and her job could be on the line when Triple H takes over the reins from Vince McMahon. While Alicia Fox had at least the opportunity to captain her team at Survivor Series, Dana Brooke's main roster run has largely been forgettable. Dana, who accompanied Emma to the main roster, was left to fend for herself when Emma got injured, and was then paired with Charlotte Flair. However, while Dana was expected to get the rub after attacking Charlotte, the company quickly realized that she was still very green and decided against pushing her. This resulted in Brooke getting stuck in the middle of nowhere and later being paired with the group of Titus Worldwide. However, Dana has been lobbying for a singles run, and WWE with the recent string of injuries due to a couple of superstars being reckless would not want to put Dana in a WWE ring during a taping or on pay-per-view. With Dana having very little to do, she may find her name on the next string of roster cuts. But if Triple H has the authority to call the shots before that happens, she would be one of the first batch of stars that would get released from the company. Baron Corbin as a single star was nothing impressive. He was decent for a big man. While he did not possess any unique traits that would set him apart from the rest of the locker room, WWE did give him a few chances after bringing him up to the main roster. Since then, Corbin hasn't done anything noteworthy as a singles competitor, and was then drafted to Raw, where he now serves as the GM of the brand. The fans aren't sure about Corbin yet, and he hasn't been that effective of an authority figure on Raw. While Corbin came through NXT, you'd have to believe that Triple H would be forced to cut ties with Corbin given the fact that the superstar doesn't add anything of value to the product. Triple H doesn't like dissidents and troublemakers and Dolph Ziggler has been quite vocal about his spot in the organization. There was a period when Ziggler was in the doghouse for the comments he made about the company and the product, and while he signed an extension last year, he is now more focused on his projects outside the company, which won't sit too well with Triple H. Ziggler understands that his time in WWE is running out, and that he won't become a world champion again. However, his lack of purpose and ambition would be a problem with someone like Triple H who expects his talent to aim for the brass ring. It's safe to say that Ziggler won't last very long if Triple H took over the WWE in the not-so-distant future. And these are 10 wrestlers Triple H would fire if he took over WWE. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching Wrestling Hub, and I'll see you later with more videos.